Good afternoon and welcome back to Stormont for the third T20 in the ITW T20 International Series between Ireland and Afghanistan. Ireland currently leading the series 2-0 after two games, after a five-wicket victory yesterday, following up a seven-wicket victory on Tuesday. The weather is set fair again. It's another scorcher here in Stormont and we've got a fantastic game ahead of us. We're on a different pitch today, so let's go out to Alan Lewis in the middle, who was looking at it. We're down here at pitch side for the third T20 ITW match between Ireland and Afghanistan. The pitch is a new one and there's... Great to hear from Alan Lewis about the new pitch and of course a key juncture of this game is the toss and yet again Alan Lewis was out in the middle earlier with the two captains. Let's see what happened. Welcome to the toss for this third T20 International. I'm joined by Gray McRae, match referee, and the two captains Mohammed Nabi from Afghanistan. Just had a small issue with the toss there, but the toss ones won by Ireland, who have elected to field first. I'm delighted to be joined by Alan Lewis again and Hammy Chuja today. Alan, you were out at the toss. Andy Balburnie's elected to field first. Was that a surprise to you? Probably not. It's a new pitch, and obviously the team news is there's two seamers in, uh, two new seamers in, so he wanted to try and make first use of that. Particularly down the city end, there's a bit more cracking, which I kind of pointed out in that pitch report, so maybe they'll be just looking to attack those areas, having gone into a 2-0 a lead in the series. And Hamid, obviously for Afghanistan, these two games haven't gone to plan, especially with the bat in hand yesterday. A slightly different team today, Hazratullah comes back in at the top of the order. How key will he be to try and change those fortunes? He would be massive. I remember watching him in India play against Ireland and he smashed 162 of 60-something balls. So he is one player who could shatter the Irish confidence right now, which is pretty much high right now. And the Afghan players are a bit uh, subdued and they do not look uh, comfortable playing in the last two games. So he could change the games. He could take the games away from Ireland in a couple of hours or five, six hours, if that's a big question mark, if he manages to stay in the wicket. But I think change was needed. Lots of the Afghan fans that we spoke to over the last couple of days said this is the time that they need to make some sort of changes. And probably that's the, why the decision has been taken. And as you say, just yesterday especially, they seemed quite subdued, Afghanistan. They obviously they haven't had too much time together as a group. Are you expecting to see them gel more and more as this series progresses? Well, I hope so. They, they didn't gel at all. They finished their domestic league in Kabul, the Shpagiza League. The next day they were on a flight and then from Dubai to England and then to, to Ireland. So they haven't had a lot of time playing together or even training together as a national team. Lots of the boys have come from different parts of the world as well. So probably they hadn't uh, had that time together. Today, after two games, after the disappointment, they would have had a deep look at what went wrong. And I hope they have done their analysis and looking forward to a different game today for the Afghans. And Alan, we can't, I suppose, put apart just how good the Irish team have been, especially in the last few days. Given the summer they've had, which I'm sure has been frustrating to a certain amount, playing so well in a lot of games and not getting over the line, this week has been very important to boost that confidence again. Well, the confidence, it never seemed to be in the team. Yes, they got close, but I think the biggest thing is Ireland have been on an upward trajectory. They've provided some fantastic cricket. People are being viewed as players around the world. The likes of Harry Tector going to, obviously, South Africa in January. That wouldn't have been heard of maybe a year ago. It's something Afghanistan have had the luxury with a number of players going to these tournaments due to their recognition. But as, as Amid said... You know, they've, they've looked to lack that gel. Even in the warm-up I was watching there, Ireland were buzzing. Afghanistan were a little bit subdued. And this coming together, there's so much that moves into a team performance. The coach backed his captain. He, he backed it up himself with, with two fantastic performances with the bat. So all of these things kind of coming together. Two new caps today, so it'll be really interesting to see how they go. Uh, and again, Ireland have been a team in transition. They have some good young players that are really coming through. But the big thing is that the trajectory has been upwards. 
Yeah, well, you mentioned those two new caps. Graham Hume making his T20 international debut, obviously played an ODI against New Zealand earlier this summer. And Fionn Hand, a man making his complete international debut today, especially for Fionn, a man you'll know pretty closely as well from the last number of years. A very proud day for himself and his family, and well-deserved as well. Absolutely. It's a long time, too, since we've seen a mother at a capping ceremony, but, of course, she works for Cricket Ireland, so I think that was well-induced. But I believe he's been very good around the squad. He's come into the 15, worked very hard, so now the time has come to, in a sense, for him to stick his hand up. That's what you've got to do. When you get your chance, you've got to try and take it. So, again, he's coming into a winning team, so that will help him. And, obviously, Graham Hume has played before. He has vast professional experience overseas, and, obviously, he's been in Ireland some time now. He's a particular type of bowler, so it'll be very interesting to see, as an example, that Zazai, if Graham Hume is taking the new ball, will be interesting. But also, for me, will be the battle between Josh Little and Zazai. Yeah, well, that will be fascinating. Looking at that Afghanistan batting, obviously, Zazai has that chance of me to maybe get them off to a flyer, but we haven't seen near on anything from Gurbaz, Mohammed Nabi, sure. even Rashid Khan with the bat, who, yeah. who is very destructive. You'd think at some stage that may click, though, and what would they be looking to do, especially in those middle overs? Well, it has to click today, otherwise it would be too late and Ireland would have won the series. It's not just that they haven't played well individually. The other issue has been they haven't been able to put partnerships together. And on the other hand, if you look at Ireland, they have been brilliant at doing that individually and also as two, as a pair out there putting partnerships. I was watching the last game, 121 wouldn't look like as a big target. Ireland could have got that score in 14, 15 hours. They didn't. They wanted to drag it as if they wanted to face the Afghan bowlers as much as they could. It was sort of a training ground for them. So they wanted to take it to the second last and then even to the last over. So it has to click for Afghanistan, not just individually, but as partners. And they have to put some partnerships together. I suppose a positive for Afghanistan has still been the bowling. We saw yesterday, even defending such a low score, the yep. likes of Farooqi and Naveen al haq got them off to such a good start. They're obviously very impressive and experienced bowlers at this stage. And you kind of can forget after these two games just how potent the Afghanistan attack is. It is. And bowling has always been Afghanistan's strength with the likes of Nabi and Mujib and Rashid Khan. But... The fearing factor, the, 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 fact, the one thing I'm surprised is that lots of fans coming into the ground, they do obviously talk about Rashid Khan as well, but a couple of other names are emerging, like Fazal Farooqi and Asmatullah Omazai, who regularly bowls at 140. So there are some emerging fast bowlers, and they need to get used to these wickets because they will be playing on somewhat similar fast pitches in two months' time in Australia. Yeah, definitely. Looking again at the Irish team, Alan, the way they've batted has been very pleasing to see. I know a lot's been made of Andy Balburnie's return to form, but Lorcan Tucker at number three has been, I suppose, the revelation of the last two weeks or so. What do you think it's been with Lorcan that's been different to perhaps what we've seen from him lower down the order? Well, I think what he's actually focused on is the strong shots. You know, he used to get out in the most tame ways, and again, there was always something about Lorcan Tucker that made a coach kind of think this, you know, the best cream will rise to the top. And the added responsibility, he's taken it with both hands. But I think the biggest thing is his attacking capability, his running between the wickets, he's always busy, and he's just grown in confidence. And it's been a real game changer for Ireland, that position at three, because if any of the learning exercise, and you look through this series, Afghanistan have lost wickets early, it's stalled their progress. Ireland have learned from the mistakes of the T T20 series against New Zealand, but they were constantly losing wickets in the power play. You can catch up. The biggest hitting in these games is always done in the latter stages of these matches. And often there's too much emphasis, I feel, on the power play. The biggest thing is to be one, certainly maybe two wickets down, and you can get to 47, 50, even any, anything between 40 and 50 because the big banging is at the end of these matches. Yeah, well, it's going to be a very interesting game and a very interesting first innings, which we'll be delighted to be showing you after just a quick break.
What a wonderful afternoon here in Stormont for the third T20 International between Ireland and Afghanistan as part of the ITW T20 International Series. Between the two sides, you can see on your screens there, the Irish side just about to come out onto the field of play after the two standing umpires. Ireland winning the toss earlier on this afternoon and electing to field first. Two T20 International debutants for the Irish team. Graham Hume making his T20 debut and Fionn Hand making his international debut as well. So best of look to those two players and the Afghanistan opening batters. Myself, Andrew Blair White and Nathan Jones will take you through the first five overs of this first innings. Nathan, how are you this afternoon? Good afternoon, Andrew. Delighted to be here once again. Twice in two days getting our fix of T20 international cricket here at Stormont. What a delightful day, as you mentioned earlier. Interesting to see the two changes from Ireland. I think they were largely expected. This this squad has had quite a high workload. It's been a while since they've made any changes and back-to-back -back games, no surprise to see it's the bowlers who get some, some of the workload shared around as, like you said, Messrs. Hand and Hume. Fast bowling options come into the side. Yeah, I think given the amount of games played and the continuity to the side, there's, I think everyone was expecting changes at some stage throughout this series. Also an opportunity, obviously, for, for players to get a chance and, and show themselves off. And the one change for Afghanistan is going to be on your screens at the moment. Hazratullah Zazai coming into the attack, or coming into the team, should I say, and opening up here with Ramanullah Gurbaz. And it was given the, the amount of mental damage that Zazai has inflicted on Ireland in the past, this will be a key wicket for them. Well, we were just having a, before we came on air, we were having a brief discussion in the back of the commentary box about Zazai in that 162 not out that he famously scored against Ireland and how much how much that's inflated perhaps his average of 35 and strike rate of 147 in T20 international cricket which is remarkable for a for a top order batter but he's you know he's played 25 games so it's not just a case of he has got that sole score so it's it's an interesting one to see whether it's a small sample size but anyway Mark Adair to open up for Ireland and that is the worst possible start from Mark Adair just a complete loosener in every sense and well down the leg side. Lorcan Tucker could do nothing about that and goes to the fence for five. Yeah, like you said, it's about as bad as it gets. Floated full delivery from Marcus Hare. He looked very, like you said, much like a loosener. Perhaps even a little bit stiff. Didn't have any rhythm coming into the crease there at all. Yeah, straying down the leg side again there, Mark Adair. So you had to see a legitimate delivery. Afghanistan already moving on to six without loss. Change in pitch today from the pitch we've seen in the first two T20 internationals. So it'll be interesting to see just how it plays, how... I suppose the Afghanistan openers approach this innings as well because they could do with some momentum with the bat in hand as Zazai gets off the mark. Well, Ireland certainly have a clear idea as to how they think Zazai will go about his innings. Square leg and deep mid wicket are the two outside the ring to start. We saw in previous games they like to have someone on the offside just to offer a little bit of extra protection for those wide deliveries, but not the case to Zazai. They clearly have seen something. And their analysis, but perhaps a more regulation field to Gurbaz as we've seen so far in this series. The deep points and a deep square. Very full to star from Market Air. Quite floaty just to start off as you mentioned it's been a long hard summer for some of these fast bowlers and you know especially in the heat here in Stormont can be difficult at times but Gadair will be ideally looking to drag that length back ever so slightly yeah it's still very full I wonder it's a different pitch 
So obviously Alan Lewis did our pitch report for us. Perhaps a few more cracks, maybe he might nibble around a bit more. Probably not nibble off that length. So I, I suspect Mark Adair is still just trying to, as he said, drag it back. Or maybe he is just on a new deck trying to experiment with a few different lengths and see what, what reward he gets. That's a better length from Adair. Left through by Amanala Gurbaz, who just hasn't quite got going in this series so far. Shaped with promise on Tuesday, then drove airily to short third man yesterday, which really was a bit of a freak dismissal, to be honest. You won't see that type of dismissal too often. Yeah, well, he just nicked a wide half volley to short third, didn't he? The yard either side, he would have got his boundary. Having bowled that first delivery, which went for five wide, so Dare has come back very nicely here in this first over. He can manage to get through this final delivery without conceding a boundary. One would have to say it, it would be job well done. It's cut away, though, and that is going to go to the boundary, so he can't get out of his over, and Gurbaz... Gets a boundary to start off his account. One over gone, Afghanistan 11 without loss. That's exactly the start they'd have wanted. Yeah, short and wide, punished, wasn't it? Adair got the treatment from Gurbaz. We spoke before about how sometimes Ireland would like to have some protection out there on the offside. For the width, but not that wide. Well, not a whole pile Curtis Camfer could do out there at deep cover. Apart from fetch that one from the fence. It's going to be Josh Little to... Open the bowling, as we've seen so often from the city end. Great to see on your screens there. The Afghan supporters out in force again. Very colourful supporters and loyal. It's been fascinating seeing them obviously enjoying and loving watching their nation play. It's interesting to see Ireland have switched ends, haven't they, in terms of what end they opened from. We saw Josh Little bowl over number one in the previous two games in this series. I wonder if that's because we are on a different pitch today. This pitch is much closer to the clubhouse, so to the leg side boundary for the left-handed Zazai, and I wonder if that's just a case of trying to bowl towards the larger leg side boundary at the end of the game. Good piece of feeling from Camfer in a backward point there. It was a again a bit of a loosener this time from Josh Little, short and wide. And as I couldn't quite find the gap. Yeah, I think it's probably something as small as that, Nathan. I think you're bang on there. Let's say the the boundary dimensions have kind of switched to around 20 metres or so, around 10 metres longer out towards the scoreboard, the far side of the ground, or 10 metres shorter this side towards the pavilion. Yeah, don't mind that from Little. He's got the field set to bowl into Zazai's pads. Like we said, still with that deep mid-wicket and deep square, as Mark Adair had to the left-hander. Just have a look early doors and see if he's able to keep out the fast full one. But again, we saw Josh bowl some heavy legs into the pitch so far in this series with the new ball. So we'll see if that's what he reverts to here. You know, I think that's not a bad option to Zazai. Try to test him out in that kind of rib cage to kind of under the armpit area, really. It's an uncomfortable length to play. He's not overly efficient against it. I think what Ireland have learned and learned at a heavy price before with Zazai is you just cannot bowl anywhere near that slot because it will disappear.
Yeah, good running from Gurbaz. And backed up well by Zazai there as well, just defending that one into the offside, just slightly in the gap between point and cover. It's already showing probably a busyness and a hungriness for runs that we certainly didn't see yesterday. They were awfully laboured really throughout the day yesterday, Nathan. Yeah, well, whenever they tried to release the pressure, it was either a, a poor shot selection or just a bit of bad luck. We spoke earlier about Gerbaz's dismissal. I mean, call it short third of a nick. It doesn't happen too often. So, But some of the other dismissals were, were pretty average shots. So they can find other ways of releasing pressure, like dropping and running like that. As Little's going to have to go back and... Well, that one again. He's rubbing his face. I wonder if just something flew into his eye, perhaps. <laughs> Seems to be okay, thankfully. I think a little fly or something of that nature has just gone straight into his right eye, calling him to end up running through his delivery stride. Oh, the leading edge and just short of Andy Balberni, squaring Zazai up completely there. And almost looping into the graceful hands of Balberni at extra cover. Yeah, I wonder if that one just left him a touch. That's what Josh Little can be so good at. Two left-handers with the new ball. It just, just gets that ball to lead them a little bit and leave them late up the pitch. I wonder if that's what happened there. It sounds like I just closed his bat face too early. Down the leg side on this occasion from Little. Trying to make sure he gets through this first over. I, I know in both games so far in this series, he's bowled a very good first over and has gone for a boundary off that last ball, much to his anger yesterday, certainly. Be looking to make sure that isn't the case on this occasion. Which it isn't, just defended into the offside. Good start from Little. 14 without loss after two. What Zaza is doing before that delivery, <laughs> he signaled to the Afghan bench he wants a new bat. The new bat is coming, but it's obviously not broken because he still faced the delivery and was more than happy to, to use the bat for a delivery. So, I'm not quite sure what's happening here. I know some players like to use different weights of bat depending on what they're trying to do. You know, the heavier bat is the, the power hitting bat, perhaps. I don't know what's going through Zaza's head here. I thought the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen was when we were at the India Games earlier on this summer in Malahide and every time Hardik Pandya hit a boundary, he called for a new bat. It wasn't working for him, clearly. Well, here's Graham Hume. He's played a, one, a few one-day internationals this summer, but here we go on T20 international debut for Ireland. Starts off with a dot ball. And Gurbaz leaves that one outside off. A good start for Graham Hume. Probably known more so around Ireland, to be honest, as a as a 50 over operator. As as much as he's been very good for the Northwest Warriors in all formats, I think probably his bread and butter is is more in in longer format cricket than T20. But he's getting his opportunity now on the international stage. Just wonder whether the likes of Zazai and Gurbaz with Graham Hume and Fionn Hand potentially might try to take on um, some of those more aggressive options. Maybe see them as the two bowlers that they can really get a hold of and, and maybe put the pressure back on Ireland. There's certainly an opportunity to. But that's the length that Graham Hume bowls so 